It's the same thing with the people who shit talk me in the comments, in my comments section. I almost feel sorry for these people because they are just getting warped by um, a lot of these narratives. It's like, oh, I guess there's like a, 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 a grain of truth in this, so I'll just assume it's all truth because that's that's the issue. Like, like a lot of these arguments, you know, they'll they'll have grains of truth in them. But like when you look at the whole thing, it's like bullshit. But like if if you're not thinking about it critically, you'll just take those grains of truth and say, oh, there's grains of truth, therefore it must all be true. And it's like no, that's not how it works. I did want to dive into Mark Millar because. It's weird. Like, um, I don't know if you guys know who Mark Millar is. I'll give you my basic knowledge, but then we'll also dive into him a bit more. Um, I primarily know him as the guy who who works with Matthew Vaughn, to, and he he co well he wrote the original Kick Ass comic book, and then Matthew Vaughn took the the comic book, and adapted it to a movie. Now, if you've read the comic book and the movie, like comic book's good, but like the movie, I prefer the movie. But like, they're both good. And then Kingsman. Kingsman was more like a co uh, co creation of them. Essentially, I, I believe the comic book and the the movie were were made kind of at the the same time with Mark Millar with them both having input into both, but Mark Millar having more input in the comic book and uh, Matthew Vaughn having more input into the movie. Um, I definitely prefer Kick Ass to Kingsman. Of course, Kingsman ended up being the franchise that Matthew Vaughn stuck to, which was an interesting choice. But okay. But I want to uh, dive into uh, Mark Millar because he's been doing some interesting stuff recently. And I don't really know what his history is. Um, but anyways, uh, let's let's go ahead and switch over view here. Um, that's, that's not what I want to look at yet. What I want to look at is this tweet that he did uh, early last month. I got it. was over a month ago. Um, I thought about covering it then, but I didn't. But then... I don't know, then something else has come up, and it's like, it's interesting. So, Mark Millar tweeted, Eric July kindly sent me the first two issues of his Isom series this week, and I love them. Hard to believe this is the guy's first venture into comics. Really well put together. I also love to see a guy doing his own thing. Well done to him. And, um, I mean, there's a couple things to be thought of. Uh, first off, like, this does read off, like, somebody who's just, like, like, did he actually read them? Because it comes off weird. It does come off like he didn't read them. Like, uh, like, he heard of this Eric July guy, he's an independent comic book creator, he sent him a couple issues of comic book, which is something that might happen to him a lot. And he, he just wanted to send out some positive vibes. It comes off maybe like that. But, you know, I some being awful and eric july being awful it, it it a tweet like this doesn't ring well and of course you know we got Vito and dick masters and lots of people chiming in i chimed in as well um but yeah it was it's a weird tweet um kick ass 2 uh, kick ass 2 uh is a it's a movie, like, first of all, like, I know Jim Carrey disavowed it, and the whole story about Jim Carrey disavowing it was essentially he didn't like how violent it was, which was weird because the first one was super violent, and I don't know what movie he was getting into. I mean, he was on set while it was filming. Um, but, to his credit, I thought Jim Carrey also did a really fucking good job in that movie. Like, he was amazing in that movie. Um... My thoughts overall on Kick-Ass 2 is, uh, it's been years since I've seen it, but I remember the first half being really boring, and the second half being pretty badass. It's, it's something where I, I wish um, Matthew Vaughn had returned. But uh, it is what it is. But anyways, yeah, no, the, like, uh, like uh, Roy saying, it sounds like fake phrase. It really does. It really does. Uh, but it, it's, it's uh, you know, it happened. And, you know, now there's all these videos talking about how Mark Millar uh, loves Isom. Because, you know, that that's what you do. 
that's what you do. Well, I guess the big noteworthy ones would be Air July here and uh, Rip Reverse Goalpost. Rip Reverse Goalpost. It's kind of a hilarious channel. They're they're awful. Like Rip Reverse Goalpost's primary goal is to bully people on Twitter. But they're also kind of hilariously inept at it. Actual fandom loves to make memes. He is an expert, highly skilled. Check these out. So it's, it's, it's a weird, my feelings towards Rip Reverse Goalpost are so fucking mixed. Um, I, let's see, how long are these? This is six minutes. We can dive into this a little bit, see what Eric July says about this. What's good, everybody? Let me set the scene here. Mar that, that is true, Julia. I've noticed that about his stuff too. Like, I, I, I'm not like, I've read, Mark Millar is a comic book writer I like. But, like, he's never been one of my favorites. And I have noticed he does like a lot of sexual assault in his comic books. Um, I, I feel like lots of times he goes for edgy. And sometimes I feel like maybe that's just the tone he wants to do for the comic book. But I feel like he's going for edgy for the sake of edgy. Which can be fine. But, yeah, I, I, I have noticed he does that. Mark Miller, you guys know him. Done a lot of stuff. Marvel, DC. But things like Kick-Ass, Kingsman, has allowed this man to be able to call his own shots. He's one of the few guys in comic books that really can do that. He's seen a lot of success. And he recently got his copies of I Some 1 and uh, I Some 2. And he took it to Twitter and he gave, uh, had nothing but positive things to say about it. First, I want to give him a big shout out for that. I never told him to do that, never asked of him to do that. Uh, yet he did it anyway, and that stuff goes a long way, and I'm very, very appreciative of it, considering who it's coming from, especially. Now, with that being said, I guess before I go all the way in, let's read it. He says, Kindly, Eric D. July kindly sent me the first two issues of his Ice Home series this week, and I love them. Hard to believe this is the guy's first venture into comics really well put together. I also love to see a guy doing his own thing. Well done to him. Again, I'm very appreciative of the, of this. Um, and for even further context, because... So, like, I, I'm pretty sure Eric's eventually going to go into the conflict narrative here. But, like, for, like, the first minute here, I'm almost like, oh, this is actually kind of nice. Like, Eric, Eric even, even if it is kind of generic praise, Eric's like, oh, dude, Mark Millar liked my stuff. That's awesome. I, it's actually kind of nice. Um... It's too bad Eric's a piece of shit because he, here for a moment, it's like, eh, this it, it, is nice. <laughs> when a guy like Chuck Dixon praises me, you have uh, some people that will love to just dismiss it because he's doing work for the Ripperverse. Me and Mark Millar are not doing anything together. There's no deals. We've not inked anything. Uh, he's not doing any writing for the Ripperverse. There's no connection there. He did this on his own accord. And again, I appreciate that. As to be expected, though, you're going to have, if you go read these comments, there are some people that uh, that uh, take great exception to it, as to be expected. Some of it's going to be for ideological reasons, because uh, of the uh, the stuff that this guy's been able to do, he's going to get people from all walks of life, all that good stuff, and it's unfortunate that you're going to have those that are so politically obsessed, they just can't get over the fact that a guy that may think a little bit differently than they do politically saw success. Of course, the others are going to be the unoriginal uh, a little, uh, uh, Julia uh, here says, My problem with Millar is he's trying hard to Garth Ennis as Lord, but without the level of irony. That is a really interesting point. I've never thought about that because, like, Garth Ennis does the same type of stuff. Like, Garth Ennis writes it a whole hell of a lot better. And that, like, when you read a Garth Ennis book, like, yeah, it's got the edgy shit in it, but, like, there's, like, a, there's usually a reason behind it. Like, he understands why you put that stuff into a book and implements it well. Whereas with Mark Millar, it frequently feels just tacked on. That's a really good point, Julie. That's a really good insight. I, I like that. I've never thought about it that way. 
uh, 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 little internet Karens. Uh, same. I mean, or it's like the robots, right? Or repeat. You can best believe when anybody says they like it because they heard somebody else ask the question. And even though it's been answered a thousand times, what well, was your favorite part of ISOM is what they're going to say because they just can't get over the fact that some people actually like it. I yeah, no, I, I will admit I found it so boring. I am kind of surprised some people like it. But, you know, I'm willing to accept some people like ISOM. Um, it's just strange. And, you know, it... it, it it is strange if Mark Millar likes it, but maybe he does. You know, that's the other option. Like, number one, it does come off like generic. Like, hey, you know, you're you're just a young up-and-comer. Here, let me give you some positive words. It does come off a bit like that. But maybe he did read it and like it. And, you know, that's fine. I disagree, but it's fine. Mm. See, this is the thing. I am perfectly aware, despite what these weirdos... I, let me say this. There are, there's a guy he, that some people want me. And he has to go into a conflict narrative. He can't just be happy with Mark Millar. He has to go into the conflict narrative. Oh, okay. Mm. To be. They want me to be the guy that can't hear people uh, and their complaints. They want me to be the guy that can't take criticism. They want me to be the guy. Yeah, you really can't, Eric. Because if, 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 you, if you could take criticism, you'd just move on. Dude, you have half a million followers on uh, YouTube. You're going to get criticism. Um, that can't get over the fact that there are some others that may not be into what it is that we do. Now, granted, that couldn't be any further from the truth. I, and, and, and what it is, actually, is a projection. Because this is my position, and it's been this forever. I can accept the fact that some people are not going to like ISOM, or not going to like some stuff that's coming from the Riververse. That's kind of the point here, right? We're gonna we're building this expansive universe. You could think with all of the characters And so so far, I mean he's not gone purely into the conflict narrative, but like yeah, he is kind of uh fluffing his audience a bit here. Essentially like, you know, they're going after me because I'm trying to build this thing. And uh no, Eric, nobody's going after you for ISOM. Um you you frequently throw it out in front so it ends up kind of getting caught up in everything because it's impossible to to dodge it because you just are constantly throwing it out there. But, uh, no, pe people are upset with you because you uh, push a lot of hate onto things. You you bully people. You have, like, your, your audience that you've mobilized into a hate brigade. Um, that's people's issues with you. If you just made a comic book, nobody would care. You know, maybe maybe you'd get some fans who just like you for the comic book, and then, then you could just be like, hey, Mark Millar likes my comic book. Isn't that awesome? And then, you know... People won't really have, uh, you know, you'd have your fans saying yay, and then, you, you know, that's it. Is that that are at um, Marvel or DC, as that company had decades of growth, there's some characters that you love, some characters you're not maybe as fond of. If Isom isn't up to your speed, maybe Chuck Dixon's Alpha Core is up to your speed. Maybe Yaira, written by the Saskas, are going to be up to your speed. Either way, I can accept that some people will not like a given story or a given, let's say. You can. That's interesting, Eric. You can accept it. Because why are you in Twitter all the fucking time getting in fights with people? Because that doesn't seem like somebody who can accept it. Say narrative or character in a Riververse. What they can't get over is that people actually love it. And people actually genuinely like it. So that that's that's not it, though. What what we can't uh, well we can't. Um, what people have an issue with, Eric, is that you're constantly spewing hate. Like you literally like half your channel anymore is just shitting on Miles Morales, a character who's fairly universally beloved. Um, it's it's interesting that 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 you've decided to base so much of your channel on just hating on Miles Morales, and that yeah. When you when you choose to, to dedicate that much of your channel to something like that, to somebody who's very beloved, you're going to get people who are upset with you. Like, imagine if I decided to make a YouTube channel saying f that called Fuck Peter Parker. And like every like every other video was me talking about how Peter Parker was a piece of shit, you know, white token character, you know, fucking they, they you know, Miles Morales isn't good enough. So so they just got to make a white token character. Uh, to copy Miles Morales. You know, what well, if I did that? Like, I'd get a lot of hate. 
Because Peter Parker's an awesome character, just like Miles Morales. Um, and I'm not saying you're not allowed to dislike Miles Morales, but I am saying it is interesting how there was a video about you talk about how you thought Miles Morales was a, a well-written, uh, separate individual character, and then you got a job at the Blaze, and then your tune changed to you hate Miles Morales now. That's interesting. That's the whole projection of it all. They think of themselves and what it is they say as gospel. Uh, and therefore, they kind of dictate. And this has kind of been the whole thing that's happening with comics. And well, Julia, I will add. I, like, I like. while I like the kick-ass comic book, I prefer the movie. And I've read stuff that I like. One thing that I will say that I've read by him that I do not like was the Ultimates. I did not like the Ultimates at all. Um, Ultimates was just kind of, ugh. I don't know. Yeah, it it felt very much kind of like what you're describing. Edgy, just for the sake of being edgy. Um, it was nowhere to me. Um, oh, uh, Mark, uh, Lucifer was blocked by Mark Millar yesterday. Yeah, no, I'm trying to think, like, we'll dive in here a bit. Like, I'm trying to figure out, is he just trying to get on the culture war shit? Like, what, what is he doing? Honestly, like, I'm kind of okay if you want to get in on the culture war. But, like, choose your side? Like, you know, like, if you're going to fight for people's rights, then go for it. But, like, if you're going to be kind of a, a shit... Look, I think I don't know if he's being a shithead or if he's just kind of completely ignorant, so... Kind of the goal here is to find that out. <laughs> In the first place, it's been real real clicky, un unfortunately. And uh, these are folks that are under this delusion that they kind of, uh, I guess the industry itself marches to their beat. And so they get to determine what is good, what is not good, what is uh, uh, righteous, what is just, all that. When that's just not really how it works. And the Ripperverse is an example of that because we don't have to. Well, Eric, using, again, what you're saying right here, you don't get to determine that either. Just just going to throw that out there. Play by any of you guys' rules because we've made, remained uh, uh, independent. And that's awesome, right? But like I said, going back to the... Yeah. Uh, Paul Moses, did Mark Millar also write the Civil War comic book? Yes, he actually wrote the main line for the Civil War comic book. And the main line for the Civil War comic book is interesting. But if you remember, um, it's it's fine. The, the main line, but like the really good Civil War comic books are actually the offshoots. Like Amazing Spider-Man had a fantastic run during Civil War. Um, I know there's more. I need to, it's been a while since I've read Civil War. I just really remember Amazing Spider-Man and whole Spider-Man arc during Civil War was a phenomenal. The main line was fine, but I feel like what the main line suffered from was uh, it was a bit more uh, character neutral in that like you didn't really get so much in the characters just like here's their actions and you kind of get an idea of why they're doing it but like you know it was a bit more formal in like how it told the, the civil war storyline whereas like uh like something like the amazing spider-man storyline we got into kind of peter's head and how he was viewing this stuff and how you know initially he's with iron man because tony stark and him are really good friends and like you know he believes in him and eventually he just finds himself citing more and more of captain america as these fights go on as it gets dirtier that you know he can't stand by what tony's doing and he he, he feels more on steve's side um so yeah like yeah it was decent but yeah the original point i can accept that people the movie not better than comic book are you talking about kick-ass or uh civil war so if you're talking about Kick-Ass, I disagree, Pink Bunny Zero. But if you're talking about uh, Civil War, it, it depends. It really depends for me. Like uh, the, like I said, there's offshoots of Civil War that I like more than the movie. Definitely. Without a doubt. Um, I might say I prefer the main line, uh, the, the, the movie to the main line series that Millar wrote. But there's definitely, like I said, side stories that I think are fantastic and way better than the movie. But some people aren't going to like it. But can you, for whatever reason, accept that some people will? Many people will. Perhaps tens of thousands of people will. And now that includes uh, Mark. And again, I appreciate him. I, I really thank him for those kind words and saying that stuff publicly. He's a guy that can take uh, take that because he knows he has yeah. to have known. I mean, there's not much left here. But it, it seems like, as far as an Eric July video, this seems fine-ish. Like... The Essentially, there's a bit here where he's kind of fluffing up his audience, kind of like feeding him kind of bullshit lines to, to regurgitate 
But like at least I guess at least Eric's not specifically going after people in this one. So that's that's a nice difference for Eric. <laughs> that as soon as he said that in public, there were gonna be some people that are irate. I mean, absolutely just just angry because again, they want that narrative to be true so bad that nobody actually likes this and uh, that it's the worst thing in the world. They would, of course, want to say that. And others are going to have a completely different opinion, and they just can't get over the fact. Oh, is it just pronounced Miller? I'd assume because the A was Miller, but uh, maybe it's just Miller. Hmm. fact that, well, some people have that opinion. And like I said, they were never going to give any of us a fresh shake anyway just because it's the Ripperverse. And I'm okay with that. It is what it is. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. Big shout out to Mark. Thank you. Yeah, it is what it is. Okay. Um... That that as far as Eric July videos goes, that was very fairly neutral. So uh, good good on Eric July. So I figured next up we we might as well just look into Mark Millar a little bit or Millar. I guess it's Miller. Let's see. Uh, he's Scottish. Uh, producer who came in prominence with his run on Superior Studios Authority. Oh, Authority. Their their Authority is what one of the books they're adapting into. Uh. uh movies um under the james gunn superhero uh series i'm excited like i know dj really likes the authority and i've uh i've never read it but like it sounds good interesting um let's see yeah and then uh miller has written ex extensively for marvel comics including runs on the ultimates which i didn't like um called the comic of the decade by time really Described as a major inspiration for the 2012 film The Avengers, I mean there are elements. There are el definitely elements that 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 were drawn from the Ultimate Universe, but like there's like a gringy grossness almost to the Ultimates comic book that I don't really like. That the the Avengers movie does not have whatsoever, which I love. Mark Mark Miller's comments on Russo's making Captain America: Civil War. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, the girls kind of learned about this guy, so let's do that. Okay, so he did a post on his Miller. I keep on wanting to say Miller. Okay, so it looks like his uh, Miller World blog is not up anymore, which is interesting. But the, here we got an article from the Wrap about it, so we can go over this. So Mark Miller apparently wasn't a fan of Captain America: Civil War. Outspoken comic book writer Mark Miller had a tough time at the movies in 2016, reserving much of his criticism for Marvel's Captain America: Civil War in his year and roundup of his favorite movies. Civil War had a good opening, 20, 20 minutes, but then I honestly can't remember what the movie was about. Miller wrote on his Miller World blog post. His opinion holds particular weight given that he wrote the comic book event series on his Marvel, on which Marvel based its big screen adaptation. It's interesting. Co-directors Anthony and Joseph Russo have a background in comedy because it's really missing in these otherwise well-made pictures and very 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 missed miller continued i really hope this bleakness doesn't extend into their two avengers pictures because that's what made the first avengers work was the light as well as the shade and i'll be sad if it's all lost like like it was in this picture i don't remember a whole lot of copy in his run of civil war so that seems like a weird complaint um i don't remember that being a hilarious laugh fest Civil War was a Marvel comic crossover storyline in 2006 that was built around a seven-issue limited series written by Miller and penciled by Steve McNiven. The event extended to most of Marvel's superhero titles at the time. The series received a polarized reception, but was a commercial success, forming the basis for the Marvel Studios films Captain America Civil War, which likewise features Captain America and Iron Man in opposition to each other. But in Civil War, wasn't the lone object of... Miller scorn. This was really hard, he wrote of the film in 2016. Most years, because it's hard, because if we go to the cinema once or twice a week, it's hard to whittle da down. But this year, it was hard to find 10 films I really loved, so I settled for light, for the most part. And the big surprise for me is that the movies I liked best were outside the genres I adore. Miller is the writer of Kick-Ass series of comics, which have been adapted by Universal into two major uh, motion pictures. His most recent book-to-screen adaptation was 2016 or 2014's Kingsman's Secret Service, calling, starring Colin Firth. Oh, that's it. And yeah, I, I I don't like this. Doesn't even take me to his blog post. I don't. I I imagine it's down. 
yeah, no, he's, let's see, is there anything of note? Let's see, early life, career, Marvel vs. DC career. Yeah, he has kind of a standard uh, comic book, uh, like, uh, history. Like, he, he did a lot of work at Marvel and DC, and then he did kind of his own uh, Miller World uh, unified label for his future creator-owned comics. You know, lots of creators, when they're successful, do that. He earned a reputation as a controversial and outspoken writer. In interviews, he openly criticized the business practices of American comic industry in the 90s. The comic book writing trend of decompression polarized in the early aughts. And the tendency of the big two publishers to oversaturate the market with tie-in spin-offs in the mid-aughts. Uh, as well as DC Comics management of the authority during the tenure as the title's writer. In his writing, Miller has incorporated the themes of domestic abuse, teenage pregnancy, tr child molestation, and rape. Uh, the later, sometimes for comedic effect. In tw August 2013, when asked by uh, Abraham Reisman of the New Republic about the use of rape as a plot device in more than one of his comic books, Miller responded, The ultimate act that would be the taboo to show how bad some villain is was to have somebody being raped, you know. But I don't think it matters. It's the same as, like, a, a decapitation. It's just a horrible act to show that somebody's a bad guy. I mean, I, I mean, they have different usages. Um, yes. Um, rape does really show that somebody's a bad guy. Um, I think it's interesting to, to phrase it that way. Because, like, artistically... The, hmm... I, that, that requires some some thinking, cause like, rape is like also kind of like I mean, I, I decapitation is a violation too, but yeah. Wow. Oh. The comment drew criticism from industry peers and comic book journalists. Some of our instances include Miller's uh, publicity, publicly expressing amazement at the fact that non-Caucasians can get Down syndrome, and referring to all gamers as pedos in an interview. What? What the fuck? He has he has to be joking with some like he has to be fucking joking or fucking high for some of that. What? Miller was uh, I'm just reading Julia here. Miller was friends with Grant Morrison at the time. During the nineties they worked on Scroll Kill Krill at Marvel. Um then 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 they later stopped being friends. Yeah, Grant Morrison's a, a really good writer, in my opinion. I don't know if I've read a book by Grant Morrison I dislike. Um, Miller frequently uh, employs unusual tactics to promote himself and his work, such as uh, public bets with Harry Knowles regarding the casting of the lead actor of the upcoming Superman film. Harry Knowles. Okay. He doesn't look familiar. Uh, upcoming Superman film in 2004, which Miller used as a way to advertise his own run on Wolverine. That same year, Miller claimed the rapper Eminem was in talks to take the lead role in the film adaptation of his creator-owned series, Wanted, which resulted in public denial by Eminem's management via Variety. In 2006, Miller auctioned uh, the right to the name of the protagonist of the then-upcoming creator-owned series, Kick-Ass. Kick -Ass. In 2016, he organized a treasure hunt for advanced copies of Jupiter's Legacy hidden in the ten cities around the world. Oh, Jupiter's Legacy. So, Jupiter's Legacy. I'm one of, like, the three people who watch that series. And I will say, that series, um, it's, um, it actually ends decent. Well, it ends interesting. It ends on a cliffhanger, so there's no resolution because it was canceled. But, dude, like, the first episode or two of that series fucking sucked. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was a mixed bag. <laughs> um... Well, I don't think he sold Miller World to Netflix, but I think he did have a deal with Netflix. And I think Jupiter's Legacy was supposed to be the beginning of uh, Miller World stuff being adapted to Netflix. And Jupiter's Legacy was a fucking failure, um, on Netflix at least. Anyways, in 2017, Miller established a charitable foundation and launched a multi-year campaign to promote it. Throughout the 90s and early aughts, Miller was close friends with fellow Scottish writer Grant Morrison. The pair frequently collaborated on works published by Ameri British and American publishers and appeared together at various events. Morrison, Morrison was seen as a mentor figure in their relationship, as evidenced by numerous strip 
strip was created by uh, Garth Ennis and Dave Gibbons for the anniversary issue of 2000 AD, in which Miller appeared in the form of a small droid repeating every single phrase, me and Grant. Um, and the pair was also parodied in an issue of Simpsons comics written by Gail Simone, shown fighting over whose then ongoing X-Men series, Miller, Ultimate, or Morrison's New, is more important. Sometimes, uh, sometime around 2004, uh, Miller and Morrison seemingly cut all communication and never interacted in public again, which, according to Mer Morrison, happened because Miller wanted to break away from the image of Morrison's protege after the success he had with the Authority and Ultimate X-Men. When asked about the state of their relationship in 2011 interview, Morrison responded, I wish him well, but no, there's no good feeling between myself and Mark Miller for many, re for many reasons, most of which are they destroyed my faith in human fucking nature. Ooh. All right. Um, I mean, that's probably about what we're going to get from Wiki. And here's the interesting thing. So, like, if you actually go to his uh, Twitter, there is nothing really unusual here. Um, you know, this, like, 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 if I were go going to, like, if I were going, like, lots of times I go to Twitter pages to see if somebody's a chud, frankly. And I look at his, and, yeah, not really, you know. Uh, it all seems kind of normal. Com honestly, like, this seems like something most comic book writers would post. Um, kind of standard stuff. Seems fine. You know, and uh, now we're getting to kind of the next stage of this, because, uh, I, like I said, a lot of this stuff happened a month ago. I wasn't really going to cover it. But then we get to um, this video, which we covered a little bit on initiative, but we will uh, go ahead and rewatch it here. And we kind of covered it on the initiative, but I'll go ahead and re uh, reiterate and elaborate on my thoughts here of this video. Because it's actually a clip from a bigger video, to my understanding. Most of these new writers don't have the love of comics like these. Oh my god, Twitter's fucking video player sucks. Okay, let's turn this down a bit. Okay, that was a bit loud. Let's try this again. Most of these new writers don't have the love of comics like these older writers. Okay, that that's just his audio recording. Okay, I didn't catch that uh, yesterday. Had, um, and all they care about is. How can I put myself in the book? No, we don't care what you would do if you were Iron Man. We don't care who you are. You're writing Tony Stark. You're not writing yourself in a book. If that's the case, write your own comic with you in it. No one will read it because nobody cares. People, people grew up, uh, are growing up loving Peter Parker, loving Miles Morales, loving all these Captain America. We don't need you to put your input in it. Just write Steve Rogers. Don't write Steve Rogers. What would Steve Rogers be if I was Steve Rogers? That's not how it works. But that's, again, how most of the most of these new people write nowadays. That's why most of the stuff is shit. Because we don't care how you would, what you would do, because we don't care about your life whatsoever. Just write a book, get paid for what you do, get paid for what you're supposed to be doing, and make it a, a good story. Most of these new writers... Okay. I hate Twitter video player now. Um, it, used, it used to be way more intuitive, but anyways, that that made the chud circles. All the all the the big chuds were sharing that. I found that uh, I got a link to that from Nerdrotics page, of course. And it's weird. So like, when I watch that, like, the couple of thoughts that come to me is, uh, let's see. Real quick, Paul Moses, what do you think of Linkara? I actually, did, like, I haven't watched the top fourth one in a long time. I we, we used to watch it occasionally. Um, I think he's fine. I've never had an issue with Linkara. But anyways, going back to this guy. Um, this guy, he's a comic book store runner. Comic book stores are struggling right now, so I have sympathy for a lot of his uh, issues. That being said... Um, I need kind of an example of what you're talking about where writers are writing themselves as characters. Because I will say, as a character who... As a character. Um, a writer's always going to put a piece of themselves into their writing. Otherwise, they're not really writing. Like, that's, that's, you draw from personal experiences when you write. Now, if they're, like, not writing the character as they should be written, that's an issue, but that's... Also, not 
a common thing. So, like, I need examples. Like, there are definitely examples of shit like that happening. But, like, it's not widespread from what I've seen. And to be perfectly honest, when I watch that video, I'm not... I feel like this guy is, like, watching, like, anti-woke YouTubers and kind of regurgitating talking points without, like, thinking about them critically or looking at the media and, and, and thinking about it. That's the vibe I get. And anyways, so anyways, uh, to go back to the topic, Mark Miller. Mark Miller uh, posted, I was so appalled at the way a comic book retailer was being harassed and bullied by a digital mob this week just for saying comic books are going in the wrong direction. I had a talk with him. Here's my interview with Glenn O'Leary from this afternoon. Now, I have very mixed feelings. Number one, guys, don't don't harass this guy. Like, I, like, if this guy is going out and, like, talking shit on Twitter on people, then I kind of don't care. But, like, if he's not doing that, then don't bug him. Um, I, I'm not saying you guys are doing it. But, like, if anybody watches that and you're tempted to be like, hey, you know, you, you jerk, don't. Um, I really, like, maybe when I dive in this, I'll get different vibes. But I get vibes that this guy is just, like, just regurgitating these talking points because he watches these videos without, like, thinking about it critically. And I almost... I almost feel sorry for him because he's, he's like, I would argue that's the issue. Like it's the same thing with the people who shit talk me in the comments, in my comment section. I almost feel sorry for these people because they are just getting warped by, um, a lot of these narratives. It's like, oh, I guess there's like a, 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 a grain of truth in this. So I'll just assume it's all truth. Because that's that's the issue. Like, like a lot of these arguments, you know, they'll they'll have grains of truth in them. But like, when you look at the whole thing, it's like bullshit. But like, if if you're not thinking about it critically, you'll just take those grains of truth and say, oh, there's grains of truth, therefore it must all be true. And it's like, no, that's not how it works. So like, if this guy is getting harassed, then I hope he he doesn't. Maybe maybe I'll dive into this and change my mind. But like, really. Like, just for that video clip. And honestly, like, I almost feel sorry. Because it's kind of the chuds who who gave this video clip. Like, they pushed it out there. So, they they, they pushed it out there. And then now he gets harassed. And it, it's like, I mean, they 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 know they have people who, who call them out for their bullshit. So, when they decide to use this guy as, like, a, a vocal uh, talking point for them. They had to be aware that's going to be a consequence of that as well. So I put some blame on them as well. So yeah, Mark Miller actually has a YouTube channel. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised it's got 6.5 thousand subscribers. Not a lot. Um, but you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but, but essentially it seems like a YouTube channel where he does uh, interviews. Jeff Johns, Rob Liefeld. This shows that I watched it and I have clicked on it, but I haven't watched it. Um... I do think it's interesting. So, like, I was going through his videos. Like, he, you know, it just seems like every couple months he does a video. So, that's probably why it's not getting huge views. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, he's probably a busy guy doing other stuff. But why I thought it was inter Like, you know, lots of these guys... Oh, look. Uh, yeah, that's... He's an artist. Um, I, I think I like his stuff. It's been a while. Um, but, yeah, he mostly talks to other creatives. And I noticed one of his earlier ones is Chuck Dixon. Interesting. Of course, in our early one is Brian Michael Bendis, um, John Ramadas Jr. You know, it's kind of all over the board with, with who we'll talk to. But, uh, you know, we, we could look over a little bit of his Glenn O'Leary thing. We'll probably speed up a little bit. Glenn, but. thanks very much for taking the time today. Uh, it's been quite a week for you, but only on Wednesday, and it's already been quite a week. How's it been for you? <laughs> you know, uh, um, it's crazy. It's... Uh, um, I never, I mean, it, we haven't even had a new comic book day and it's already been, it's already been out of control, you know, Whoa, it's, um, too fast. Uh, I never, I never intended for the world, um, for this to blow up. It was just, it was just me talking on one of my videos, just giving an, opi giving an opinion. I never thought that, um, people would actually flip out over it. It's such a weird thing, isn't it? Because like, I mean, I watched it the other day and I saw the reaction and I'm quite an easygoing guy. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, Lucifer, I do think that's interesting where it's like, he goes straight for the bullying and harassment thing. And it's like, you do realize the people who are pushing this, 
Well, also, like, that's a side effect of that. So, yeah. Mm. I, I never get angry, and I was, like, incensed when I saw what was happening, you know? Because I think I just felt, it, I hate a pylon, right? You know, I hate it when when people jump on an individual. Uh, and it just seems so unfair. It was like professionals were doing it. You know, there was that weird kind of group of, um, you know, sort of online uh, Twitter crazies that were doing it. Most people... Online. Okay, let's look this up. So, Gun O'Leary, does he have, like... Because here's the interesting thing. So this is the one that went really viral, and I don't think he's he's posted here. Let me look and see if I can find this guy's Twitter. Give me just a moment here. Let me pull up the right thing so I can... Oh, first result, Glenn O'Leary comic book plaza, palace plaza. Reading's hard, guys. Um, okay, so this is, here's this guy's Twitter. Um... Holiday hours, in effect. Uh, none of this has much traction. Wait, he he's getting bullied? Where's where's he getting bu bullied, Mark? What? 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 The? There's like no interaction on here. I'm. Uh, is it on his Facebook? Where Where is this harassment campaign that... What? Okay, so here... here this looks like the YouTube video. Um, let's see. Alright, so 7,006 days, which is probably a bit high for him. Um, he's got 5.3 thousand subs. Glenn laughing at 90-year-old Phil following makes him more legendary where is the harassment campaign i just kind of assume mark knew like knew what he was talking about what the what do you guys know where he apparently got harassed at all? Like, I see Yellow Flash here. Yellow Flash will definitely harass somebody, but, like, these are all positive, like, things that I'm seeing from Chuds, but, you know, fuck, okay. Har harass, this guy's getting harassed, and I can find no evidence of it. Good to know, good to know. I found out since, though, agreed with you. You know, have you found that yourself? Have you found the reaction generally positive? Yeah. Um, most of, um, except for, you know, a few of the people, except for... Yeah, no, well, maybe, like, are we talking about this tweet? Because this tweet isn't, like, he's not even tagging this tweet. This is some guy named Ty, who I don't know, seems, honestly, seems like probably a, looking at probably a sock account of somebody. Maybe not, but it seems likely. Like, and then, like, is it like this? Like, this is a harass don't have the love of comics ah, like these ah. older writers. That that audio is not great. Um, so like, Gail Simone is not being shitty towards him. So he seems nice. Okay, this is really suspicious. Mark is, like, inventing... Like, guys, seriously, if you guys can find a harassment campaign against this guy, please let me know. Because I, like, like there's, there doesn't appear to be any... Like, e like, even if there was something on here, which there doesn't even appear to be... Oh, oh yeah. Bro looks like comic book guy worse with that. Oh, yeah, no, that, that is a shitty post. That is a shitty post. That's the first shitty post I've been able to find. I mean, Gail Simone, I'm sure, doesn't agree with what he's saying, but, like, she's not even being shitty to him. So, yeah, it, it, that's interesting. Yeah. Like, yeah, why why doesn't he talk to... Why is he reaching out to this guy? Like, what... What is the deal, Mark, Mark Miller? Yeah, no, Gail seems pretty cool to me, too. I, I'm all for Gail Simone. You know, I mean, which I was, I was very surprised that professionals would be the ones that would be flipping out and being being the way they are. What? 
do do we do we have a source? <laughs> you know, I mean that's that was that was very that was very shocking. But um, I have got so many more. Um, I mean, I've got tons of hey, we're behind you 100. percent We agree with you. Finally, someone came out and said something. And uh, unless there's something I'm missing, Lucifer, I 100 percent agree. Like the people white knighting him are the people who fucking lead harassment campaigns. Um, it was uh, yeah, I've got I've got tons of it. I mean, hell, in one day, I've got a thousand. That is true, Pink Bunny Zero. Sources are very fucking woke. New subscribers to my YouTube videos. You know, I mean, That's um, I only had like. 3,000 to begin with it. So it, it multiplied, you know, it's, um, um, but yeah, pretty much it's been positive. I mean, here you are, you reached out to me. Um, I got some messages from Gail Simone um, and a couple other creators have on their Twitter, which I don't have. I don't, I don't even have Twitter. You know, it's, uh, hey, people tell me, hey, this guy's, this guy's supporting you. This person's supporting you, you know, it's, uh, um, but it all seems to be again from old time, the, 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 the old time writers, the guys that have been around for a while that, that, that have, that have been, um, you know, it's, uh, I mean, it's weird um, because I'm I'm just a guy that just likes to. I mean, I know I have a YouTube channel and stuff, so I'm in the limelight a little. But I'm not trying to be in the limelight. I just like to go about my day and just like just be under the radar. Yeah, you, know? <laughs> you know, it's uh, um, yeah. So it's just it's just uh, it's just crazy with the reaction that it is. But a lot of most of it, believe it or not, has been positive. You know, it's uh, his own words, which is what I've seen too. And like this was post like you can tell like Mark posts this after the fact. I was appalled at this guy getting harassed. That's not the story he's telling, Mark. That's the story you're telling. What is your angle here? Well, do you know just um, to recap for people who who maybe don't know, you know, to, to recap a little bit of what happened is, you know, on, on your YouTube channel, which was you know a little bit was taken out and put online, you know, a couple of minutes where you were chatting about comics and you know you're a retailer, you've got thirty years experience in retail. And what you were saying was, it's really struggling. The American comic book scene we hear all the time is doing amazing, but you're just talking about how difficult it is. And and the thing I said is, we hear from armchair generals all the time. Even I'm an armchair general. You know, I'm not front fa customer facing the way you are. But the guys that you can't argue with is the retailers in terms of this stuff because it's not opinion; it's fact. You know, you guys, it's, it's a science. It's not an opinion, isn't it? Because you can actually see what is being sold, what is not being sold, how many people are coming into your shop. You see the footfall as a physical presence, don't you? And that's what I find so interesting because I've got a lot of friends in retail. And they're saying the same thing you're saying, but you're actually raising your head up and actually saying it out loud, which is what caused the problems for you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm not just, uh, I'm not just, I mean, I'm... I mean, he's not correctly identifying the problem because comic book sales are actually doing pretty well, just largely digital sales. Um, his enemy is not um, bad writing. His enemy is Amazon. It is. I'm, I'm a retailer, but I'm also a huge fan. You know, yeah. it's, uh, um, so, I mean, just, just for that, it's, uh, um, I mean, I'm saying just as a fan that, I mean, I just want to read a good story that, you know, that, that's, yeah. that's what I, that's what I really want. And that's like on our, on our, on our thing. It's, it's funny because it's a catchphrase we use a lot. Just tell me a good story. But yeah. you know something? That's all, that's all we want. I just, yeah. I want to be able to open up. Well, that's the thing, like Pink Bunny Zero. So like, I think like across the board, comic book stores are suffering, but like bookstores are suffering. Like. God, even malls are dying. But it used to be when you go to a mall, every mall has a bookstore. Because I know because I'd always visit them every time I went there. Even if I didn't buy anything, I'd like love to visit a bookstore. I love the, I loved the smell of new books. It's fucking amazing. And just going to the bookstore and just seeing like what new fancy novels are out. What new comic books are out. It was cool. And like now almost no balls have physical uh, 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 bookstores anymore. They're, they're very rare. The, the physical bookstores that are around are, are like Borders and Barnes and & Noble. And like even Borders are disappearing. And then Barnes & Noble is still kind of up. Um, they're wildly overpriced. But then online you have Amazon that has like fucking everything for like a decent price. And if you're wondering, the reason why Amazon has everything for a decent price is because uh, Amazon's big money maker is actually the server space they sell to the companies. So like they 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 essentially what they did was they set up this online retail business, but they set it up so that they could uh, always be running smoothly even when things are really busy during Christmas time. So they bought obscene amount of server space, and then what they decided to do was start uh, renting off that server space when they aren't using it, and then that that became their big fucking money maker. So Amazon can sell stuff fairly cheap because it doesn't fucking matter to them because they're 
it's almost like a fucking shell game for them. <laughs> like, literally, except, they're, except it's, they aren't doing, uh, well, they might be doing things illegal, but on surface, they're not doing things illegal. They're, it's like, you know, here's our side hustle where we sell businesses, where we sell, uh, you know, just online retail, which is what we're known for. But we make all our money when we're selling our server space to these big companies. Like Google and YouTube use Amazon server. It's insane. But anyways, um, yeah, all physical bookstores are going down. because it's, it, it's an issue with, like, everything getting compressed into, like, Amazon. And that's an issue. A book and look forward to reading, especially like a mainstream comic, uh, again, and getting the feeling that you always got from it. You know, it's, uh, and so much has just changed. Why do you think you had such a... Oh, yeah, Books a Million. I've seen a few of those as well. Yeah, it's, they have the same uh, vibe as, like, Borders and uh, uh, Barnes & Noble. Overpriced. But, you know, it's cool to be in a bookstore because they aren't around that much anymore. There, you know, because, I mean, I I think I'm always slightly in awe of retailers. Like, I remember the first time I discovered a comic shop. I'm sure you were the same. When I was 13 years old, and I was like, oh, my God, these guys do this all day. This is amazing. <laughs> you know, like, I just, <laughs> this, this looks like the most fun job in the world. And, and retailers always kind of had this incredible knowledge. You know, you'd go in there like in your 1980s comics, but they were telling you about 70s and 60s and 50s comics, you know? And they and they had them up in the wall and everything. You know, I was always kind of in awe. And that's why I was kind of surprised when you just came in and said, look, retail's having a really tough time with a lot of the quality of the mainstream American market. And people went crazy. What, do you, what, what was the nerve you had, do you think? Because it, it really was such a crazy overreaction, especially from pros. I, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I mean, I don't think people like to, I don't think people like to tol be told that um, stuff's not good or, so like Mar like after the Glenn O'Leary here essentially said, hey, like actually most response I've had is positive. It, this is actually kind of cool. Like uh, Miller is angling it towards the negative aspect. That's interesting. Or I mean, you know, I mean, people. I mean, I didn't single anybody out. You know, I didn't. Yeah. Um, I I didn't single anybody out. I, I... Yeah, half price books. You know, you can get cheaper there for sure. And I've gotten plenty of books from half price books. Yeah, the the, the smell of gently used books. <laughs> I used for instances with uh, with some of the titles, you know, just, I mean, they weren't, those those titles and those writers, those titles weren't being singled out either. Yeah. I just was using them as, for instance, Peter Parker. Spider-Man's my favorite character. Mm -hmm. So I'm very devoted to Peter Parker. And um, um, I don't know why they, I don't know why they flipped out. I just think, I just think that a lot of people, um, um, I mean, I like to think I spoke the truth and people don't, the, sometimes the truth hurts, you know, it's, uh, um, but yeah, to, to flip out like that, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because I think the thing that they got, got my goal, you know, was that it felt... Yeah, exactly, Stephen e. Like, like, he he's positioning, like, like, this guy's being bullied, and it's it's not... Like, yeah, the, the clip went viral, and he's gotten some negative reaction because the clip went viral, and, like, you get enough eyes on it, you'll get a negative reaction of some sort. But, like, overall, it seems like it's a positive experience to him. So, like, it's almost like, as much as I hate these chuds... Maybe they're helping this guy out a bit, and that'd be nice. That'd be nice. I, I What I hate is the fact that they're going to, by using doing that, they're going to kind of uh, put him a bit more into their worldview, which their worldview is not healthy at all. Mm. I felt like these tactics that have been used for a little while, you know, like if somebody strays outside of the narrative, a mob forms very quickly, a digital mob forms, and it's a relatively small number of people, but they're very vocal and very vicious, and they try and destroy someone. You know, they come in and, you know, they try and deplatform people, they try and... De he is pushing the negative angle. He missed the fact where this guy in the introduction is like, oh, yeah, actually, it was overall positive. I'm getting a lot of subs. This is great. Monetize them in some way, you know? And I think that's what angered me, but I think something weird happens with... Yeah, exactly, Pink Bunny Cyril. It's weird. Yeah, and I think it... Like, it... I, like if Mark Miller asked me to a show, I would go talk to him. Fuck yeah, Mark Miller. But like, yeah, it's clear he's angling for something here. Like, is this some sort of weird chud arc for Mark Miller? Are we seeing like him doing the, the, the baby steps into a chud arc? We'll have to see. It was a Spartacus moment, right? I know it sounds crazy, but I think like people have just had enough of this, you know, and they can see it with their own eyes when they walk into the comic store. The stores are not healthy just now. They're nothing like they've been in our lifetimes. And, uh, and I think there was a weird catalyst. Like, your thing really just was a bit of a turning point, I think. And everybody, the number of people who were talking to me privately and sending me links to your thing saying, this is outrageous, you know, and the, the response I got when I retweeted it and talked about it too, I just think people thought enough is enough. And what's interesting is I call them cancel pigs. No, that, that is, uh, that is, uh, you bring up something interesting, Lucifer, because that, so, like, the second somebody starts talking some right-wing talking points, the right-wing will, like, 
envelope them with love. Oh, God, we're so supportive. We're here. We have your back. And it's something the left wing doesn't do. And the reason the left wing doesn't do it, well, number one, there's a, not any dark money floating around. Le By the way, if you guys know some dark money floating around left wing circles, let me know. I'm fucking broke as fuck. But anyways, um, no, that's uh, there's lots of dark money floating around right wing circles. Lots of it. But, uh, but yeah, so, like, it's easy for people to go out and, like, say, hey, you know, thank you for supporting all this, you know. Where the left wing has got, just constantly gets fucking stung by the right wing. Hard. Constantly. And constantly. So the left wing, it's much more reserved when somebody, some, when somebody who's normally right wing comes in on their side of it. And I think it's good to work on maybe, like, not being, like, not making yourself vulnerable, but being more receptive, maybe. But, like, I understand the inclination, too, because, fuck, I get harassment campaigns against me quite a bit. I'm kind of used to it at this point. It's kind of just a thing for me. It's like, oh, look, somebody else is shitting on me. No way. What a shock. Um, but, um, yeah, it, it is interesting how, like, yeah, if you're a left wing, be prepared to get shit on a lot and if you're right wing um the right wingers will love you yeah that's kind of how it works you just have to have uh in order to go along with the right wing and get loved by the right wing you have to essentially shit on all women and minorities um that's a line i'm not really willing to cross i'm just saying and it's the people you know that try and take other people down try and uh destroy people online you know they all went into hiding it was really interesting i think there was a couple of hours where it was the usual shenanigans where they were looking to lynch someone. And then it just flipped and everybody was like, oh, no, hang on. This is actually quite shameful what they're doing. And people are deleting their tweets. So all the cancel pigs all scarpered, which I thought was really fascinating. And I don't know, I just hope for me, comics is fun, isn't it? You know, like, I, I get into comics because I love it. You know, you don't want to see these kind of, you know. Well, Mike Jenkins, he he was saying lots of the, the right wing talking points, though. He, he Like that, the, the whole thing that he said was essentially that... Um, you know, a lot of these writers are just self-inserting themselves in these characters. And he didn't state any examples. Because that is a thing that happens. But it's it's not widespread like he was trying to assert. And I don't think he's doing that maliciously. I think maybe he has a couple of examples in his head that might be 100% valid. And then you get the these right-wing narratives that, they, yes, that's exactly what's going on. It's all like this. And he just went, oh, okay. So it must all be like that. When it's it's not at all um that that's why right wing that's a talking point that they do that's why it's a sign that you know these weird things happening with this you know where people are out to hurt other people i i agree i mean the, the that's i mean what is a comic shop i mean you're going in and they're fun just like you yeah. said i mean you, you you go in there to to escape the real world um you know i mean because we all know that um you know th there isn't a big green so, like We'll see how much further we go into this, but I feel like I already got the vibe that like Mark Miller's doing a Chud uh, uh, arc, and uh, Glenn O'Leary is unfortunately a victim of them. Like he's, you know, and maybe he gets some subs from this, so may maybe you know, maybe he will get some some benefit to this. But this isn't. Um, they're kind of just using him. It feels kind of gross the further I dive into this, and Mark Miller is definitely using him. Mm guy smashing smashing a guy in a middle suit it doesn't happen but it, yeah. it's your escapism from what's going on in the real world yeah. um we don't need a lot of that that real uh brightburn says review tech usa has said the sponsors and advertisers are attracted um to people that are completely fake like these put on a mask and they're completely horrible people in private but in public no yeah no it wouldn't surprise me at all world stuff in the comics either you know i mean just just let us just just Post just make something that's fun and something that's uh you know something that is entertaining. Um, you know, uh I mean again, some of these guys, I mean, I know some of them you know, someone says, Oh look, this guy pulled his tweet down, this guy pulled his tweet down because he's uh he's been getting trashed on too much or whatever. Um they probably shouldn't have tweeted it anyways, you know. It's um but I mean I get it. I mean, most of these people, what did they have to what did they have to um to to, to say? I mean it was more of oh look, it's the fat old bald guy, you know, it's a uh, typical comic store owner. I mean, that's where you go. I mean, they That's interesting. That's like the one tweet I found that was bashing him. And that that seems to be the one he's sourcing. That's interesting. Wonder if he, how, if he didn't even get that much negative uh uh pushback. That being said, like 
I, I swear, he feels like a victim here, guys. He, he, he feels like a guy who's just kind of, you know, he's a comic book shop owner. He's suffering because of how times are right now. And, you know, he's listening to some right-wing narratives and kind of spitting those out. And and now he's getting used by the right wing, honestly. Um, it's interesting to see it happen in real time. Mike, what have I done ad hominems against the shop owner? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm I'm literally like on his side and I'm feeling empathy for him. Like what the f do you, do, Are you understanding what's happening? Um and uh got another video here from uh, one Mr. Tim Seeley that I just found a little while ago that counters the shit out of that. Um Ooh. so the problem the problem I have with that is not that the guy has an opinion, okay? It's like yeah. you know, we get accused of that all the time. I have no problem with somebody having a negative opinion about shit that I like or or whatever, but like what are, he's making these broad claims about like almost like all the comic books are being written this way or whatever, which is hundred percent not true. I can tell you, I read comics every week. Uh, and it's not happening like that. Um, it, yeah, but I then, mean, um, it, but the thing is that I, cause I looked into this guy a little bit, he's got a, a, a fucking, uh, comic shop in, in Massachusetts. You can tell by the accent. Um, he, uh, and I was like worried that he was trying to do a grift. I was like, is this guy trying to, you know, no, it doesn't seem like he is, but the kind of claims that he's making are definitely being used by the types of people that grift. You know what I mean? Um, and and I, I just wish people that were in like some perceived position of authority in the comics or whatever, like, cause he's a comic shop owner for 30 years or whatever. I wish they would be more responsible, mindful with their fucking language and not just make broad sweeping claims like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's all. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, just just to talk about what he said there for a moment, like, are there writers that don't handle characters correctly? Absolutely. Captain America's had some uh, spotty writers occasionally. Like, yeah. Um, but, like, we're talking about exceptions, not the rule. Usually, like, the writer handles the character fine. Like, even if the runs aren't great, they understand the character and do a decent job writing them in general. That's why they're hired. Um, so like without specific examples, I don't even know really what he's going off about. Like, well, so like, would it be like horrible for like, I, I can imagine if I were, <laughs> and, and I'll, that, that's not happening, but like, if I were to sit down and like write a comic, write about a character I like, right. Like there'll be some part of me thinking like, if it's a character I've loved since my childhood, right. It's like, like, Ooh, imagine if it was me. Right. But it's like. Like that, that by itself is not inherently like going to yeah. affect the writing, you know? I like mean, it, yeah, I you, was just going <laughs> to add like if a character, if a writer adds life experiences to their writing, that's yeah, just writing. Exactly. <laughs> you do it. That like it's just a part of writing. Right? And, then, and then if it's good or bad afterwards, you can look at the writing. Mm -hmm. Right. Gino, I, Gino, talk, what are you talking about? Are you like be, being sarcastic? What are you doing? You just jumping on the bandwagon of the guy. I think that's um, sarcasm. It okay, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's sarcasm from Gene. <laughs> but the other part of this is, as um, as Lucifer said here, yeah, uh, Mark Millar and Ethan Van Skyver, uh, people like that are they're yeah. saying that he's being bullied, and I have no doubt that there are people being pe complete pieces of shit to this guy, and <laughs> and I can say that after looking into him for you know a few minutes anyway, um, I I don't see any reason to fucking just go with this guy all, all guns blazing or whatever just because he has this take um i just you know so like yeah don't don't do it don't don't just bully him because yeah. he says something that yeah. you don't agree with or whatever on the other hand uh uh tim seeley said this hey what's up this is tim seeley here's a video for you uh this is my first comic i ever got amazing spider-man 230 came out in 1982 when i was five years old i loved it i read spider-man for the next 13 years but then in 1994 uh the clone saga came out and i hated it so i stopped reading mm -hmm. spider-man but too. you know who didn't stop reading spider-man a whole bunch of new readers people that are younger than me love that book uh this happens to me all the time i talk to people they're like i got it on this clone saga i don't get it but that's okay because i had other books i had savage dragon i had the crow i didn't stop going to the comic store i just stopped reading stuff i didn't like and to this day that's what I do. Do I still love Spider-Man? Yeah, of course. I've got all kinds of damn action figures. <laughs> I still love superheroes. I just don't read what doesn't appeal to me, and I let other people read it, because that's who it's for. So there's tons of great comics. I hope you check them out. Uh, there's a whole world of comics that your comic book retailer can order for you, and that you will enjoy, I promise.
books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth. Um, let's see. Uh, and then what's your take on the, the YMS and EFAP podcast? Are you talking about recently where, uh, essentially YMS criticized Critical Drinker? Which, uh, honestly, like, if you want somebody to be unbelievably and, I would argue, undeservingly fair to Critical Drinker, but still levy some heavy criticisms, watch the YMS stream where he, he covers them. Um, and then, like, it was even too much for EFAP to handle, so they invited uh, him on uh, EFAP, and they went over his stream with a fine-tooth comb, and Mahler was, like, nitpicking the shit out of it, despite the fact that YMS was as fair as humanly possible to Critical Drinker. Like, ridiculously fair. And they still, uh, they still, like, raked him over the coals for it. And I know all the EFAP fans now scream that he is bad faith. Um, which is, it, it's almost an honor to be uh, called bad faith by these guys. Because that, that's the honor I've had as well.